Welcome back friends of G&K. One of the cool things that we get to do is see what you guys do in your own fields. And that's how we learn and try to bring that stuff back to you. So where we're at today is with my good friend and my cousin, Andy Scheider. We have the same barber. We use the same, same hair tender. <laughs> we're in Andy's plots at Syngenta, just outside of New Haven, Indiana. And we're gonna take a look at some work that you've been doing out here on evaluations. So Andy, I get asked a lot what I do around G&K. What do you do around here? Well, after 32 years, I wear a lot of hats around here. I think Andy knows what's going on on this farm. I enjoy being a farm manager. I get the farm. Our main thrust of Syngenta that I work with is corn testing and soybean testing in Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. So ultimately you want yield and this is one step of it. So we're gonna look at some cool things that Andy's evaluating here at the Syngenta Research Plots and hopefully that's some things you can take home with you. We're on the cusp of fungicide season. Yep. And we're gonna look at some cool things that they're evaluating to keep in mind as we approach that fungicide application timing. So what's going on around here? What do you got to share with us? Well, first, I don't spray fungicide because we're screening for diseases. We want to see disease show up in early hybrids and inbreds so we can keep them out of our pipeline. Ultimately, we want to find some natural resistance, but we also want to find which hybrids you may need to watch out for to keep maximum yield. So as you know, we're big proponents on fungicide applications. And the interesting thing is we're on the beginning phases of what they're looking for. You should see in this field and a few others that we have along here that we have crown rot uh, evaluations, uh, northern corn leaf blight evaluations, tar spot, and gray leaf spot. We have a good hotbed of being able to get and keep diseases in this area. All of which have been problems for us and everybody viewing this video has existed in our region. We're going to treat, we're gonna recommend you treat. They're going to see what hybrids do in the absence of treatment. So it'll be a really good learning opportunity for them as they see their hybrids develop. So I think it's very interesting that you're evaluating crown rot because I think that's a, lo that's a hidden loss that people don't realize exists. Crown rot is, comes on by fusarium and pythium. Oh, we got that in the soil. Which is soil born <laughs> and it's exaggerated by wet or poorly drained soils. And especially and for- com And compaction. Especially for prolonged wet. Prolonged periods of wet. Now, unfortunately, fungicides do nothing for a crown rot, but I think it's something to pay attention to because certain hybrids will have better tolerance to crown rot than others. And knowing what your soils are like, do you have heavier soils, wetter soils, poorly drained soils? Do you struggle with compaction? Understanding what can tolerate crown rot could pay off big in the end. We don't want this hybrid or this new hybrid we sell you or your neighbor to fall down after five years of good weather Exactly. One year will come along and the thing falls over for you in the next big wind. So you have five sets of nodal roots as you move up the crown. So you can move backwards to forwards. So this would be a five, this would be a four. And these are the ones that matter, threes, twos, and ones. So the one, twos, and threes are what pumps up all your nutrition, the majority of your nitrogen. So that's the crown of your root. And when that crown rots, when that injects fusarium and pythium, that crown rots and it shuts down your xylem and phloem so you don't translocate nutrients and water and it prematurely kills the plant. It's very important to understand what conditions you have and even if you experience crown rot. So this has very good pith right now and good xylem and phloem. Like this is a very healthy stalk. You won't see rot till late in the season and so I'll be really curious to see your evaluations on which hybrids can tolerate that. I want to invite you back later to see how we see some of this corn progress in their disease. So you can spray all the fungicide you want and it will not affect crown rot. It can, it can drive a little bit of plant health and it might hang on longer, but it will not prevent crown rot from occurring. Good to know. Well, Greg, here we have more uh, fields. We're just checking it as inbreds to make sure of, uh, for northern corn leaf blight. So we'll specifically have that disease in here as the season goes. 
We only put it on a few plants, but you'll see it blow through the, the plot. Fortunately, that is one of the main reasons we spray fungicide on corn is for northern corn leaf blight. Greg, I, I like it when we all recommend fungicide, but really we'd love to see you be able to pick a hybrid that has some resistance and or know which hybrid you need to watch out for. Which is important and knowing and working with your seed guy brings a lot of value. Greg, what I really want to show you is my early planted soybeans. I get some out really early and I've done it for several years I, and I've got a good one here. I want to see these because I get these texts from you mid-March about planting beans. 27 degrees in the morning and I will plant beans in the afternoon. I came out here on March 28th. This ground was dry enough, but it's 27 degrees. By the afternoon, it was 56. And usually I'll just plant maybe four rows, maybe 12 rows. I put in six and a half acres that day, and I bet you I could have planted all of it, and I probably should have. I get excited when Andy's sending these pictures of planting beans in March, but the cool thing is beans will tend to blossom in conjunction with what? Summer solstice, everyone says. Summer solstice, and when did these start blooming? You texted me. June 7th. June 7th. So almost a month ago, these things were blooming. And this is what I love about early planted beans. Now this was not the spring for early planted beans because we almost couldn't plant. We couldn't plant when we wanted to. But this farm proves that I planted in March, never planted a single seed in April, waited clear till May 21st for the next planting. And then finally the rest of the beans were planted on June 11th. Is that familiar? So the, the pod set that you see already for the 1st of July, <laughs> and we have the whole month of July to vegetate yet. They're going to continue to add trifoliates. They're going to continue to add more nodes, more pod set. I'm really excited by the potential of these. I haven't been frosted off and I should have been. I don't understand, but it's been six times that I've planted in March. Planting early, you can't really spray early because we don't really have the weather for it. It's snowed twice since I planted them. But I came out and dug some up on April 10th and they were still good ways underneath the ground. And so I sprayed to get down a residual. Then they came up on April, they started to come up on April 17th. Not real even, but they were starting to crack through. And that, that was a little early, I got a little worried. This is a testament to seed treatments for what they tolerated planted in March to be able to get to this point today. I hope that's what it is. Maybe it's a little bit of luck that I can get this to come out and grow. But it's been six years now that I've tried this and it's made it. I'm, I'm super pleased. The only thing I noticed, you have pretty good Japanese beetle pressure out here, but you're gonna spray tomorrow. Great opportunity to put an insecticide in. Yep, we've sprayed twice. I'm getting some water hemp coming in, so I wanted to see what I should spray. These are extend beans, not my normal thing that I would do. I really like the enlist, but uh, should I add an insecticide to it? I sure would, given your potential and the amount of pressure. Greg, should I add a fungicide if I'm going to add an insecticide? Well, so that's a great question, and we get this every year. So timing on fungicide on beans is, is pretty important. The easy way to figure that out is you count your nodes. So what you want to do is you want to come the fourth node down from the top. When those pods are about a half inch long. You've which, already got pods. <laughs> you've already got pods. When pods are a half inch long, the fourth node down, that's your beginning window of fungicide. So the answer is you could be putting a fungicide on these already and it's the first week of July. Okay, we're gonna add it. Greg, I wanna show you quick what, how residue matters. Look how the beans are what looks to me like stunted and you get right to the end of this plot and it jumps up about eight oh, inches. Yeah. There is yeah. no residue here. This was a walkway and that was end rows that had full wow. sun from both sides. And I bet it was 300 bushel corn um, planted this way. And it's so thick a residue, absolutely zero residue. That's really interesting. And luckily this is the that range is border. This one's for data. So hopefully I didn't screw it all up for them. <laughs> That's the cool thing about research plots is you get to see how things work and how it differs, but residue management is really important. It's neat to travel across Indiana, Ohio, Michigan and see what different farmers are doing. I get to learn from them. 
I tell you part of it, you're gonna learn more from me now. I used to learn from you, maybe you can learn from me finally. <laughs> that's that's where we learn is from you all too. We get to see hundreds of ways of doing things and hopefully bring this information back. Andy, I wanted to thank you for letting us come around and nose around in your plots to see what you're doing. It's a lot of fun. Maybe we'll come back later and see how things have progressed. But until then, tune in to the next video. Hit the like button, comment to us. We appreciate you joining. Thanks, Greg. Do you have a portage on out here in the field somewhere? The corn's not tall <laughs> enough yet. <laughs> this is common purslane. It makes great salad. You should bring this in for your wife. When I do you think they're supposed to bloom, Greg? I get excited when Andy's sending these pictures of planting beans in March. But the cool thing is beans will tend to blossom in conjunction with what? Summer solstice, everyone says. Summer solstice.